everybody, it's me, Lady Ada, again at uh, the Ada Fruit Secret Headquarters. With me is another secret person, Mr. Chris Walker from Secret Labs. Hello. Very secretive. Um, secret Labs makes the Netduino, the Netduino Plus, and you guys do cool .NET micro framework stuff. So we're going to talk to you today about this. I'm going to ask you all sorts of questions that I've had, and I haven't yeah. had a chance to see because I haven't seen you since the launch, but just hold up. Hello again. This is, yeah, hello again. This is the Netduino. So, um, the Netduino, it's not an Arduino. Correct, it's, correct. But it is a microcontroller dev board that uses an Atmel chip. Yes. Tell me about the difference between this Atmel chip and the AVR that's used in the Arduino. All right. Uh, so the big difference on, on the chip level is this is 32-bit. So okay. the Arduino is a beautiful, I love the Arduino. It's this great 8-bit microcontroller platform. Yeah. We wanted to make the open source world much bigger and do for 32-bit. Four times Arduino, bigger. Uh, yeah, quite a bit bigger. Four times the bits. Yeah, four, four, four times the bits. Okay. Um, so we decided to do it with a 32-bit 30 30 microcontroller. Now this chip has 512k of flash, so you have like eight Compared times to 32. 32. Okay. Yeah, more on the. Um, no, so 32. Yeah, 32 on the so regular that's, Arduino. That's like almost 10, more than 10 times. It's a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's 16 times. So more. it's a much beefier chip. And 128k of RAM, so you got like. 30 to 60 times more RAM. Wow, it's, it's massive. It's, it's a massive microphone. But you can use shields with it and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you have analog digital converters. Well, so one of the big, with, with the Arduino world, what we want to do is we want to make it so that all the accessory manufacturers who are making accessories for the Arduino yeah. could sell more, quit their day jobs, and become full-time open source hardware makers. That's what I do. Yeah, exactly. It's beautiful. So we, we actually included a bunch of extra components on this board so that it's as close to electrically 100% compatible with Arduino shields. Okay. as you can get. So there's a lot of little things on here. So your i squared's over here, things, and you've got the external a ref over here, yeah. things that you don't get with the chip, but we added on to make sure oh, that we supported the community. You, you integrated an a ref in Yeah, it okay. makes the boards a lot more expensive to produce, but it provides a lot better usability for customers, and it provides a lot more sales for the accessory manufacturers. And you have a 5-volt supply, and the chip mm -hmm. doesn't even run at 5 volts, No, it doesn't. Right? It no, runs at 3.3. you added 3. it anyways. Yeah, absolutely. And then you have micro-USB mm -hmm. instead of a big USB. Mm -hmm. Just use, like, the small connectors. Well, so micro-USB is the new charging standard. All the new phones are coming either with micro-USB or they have to have adapters which plug into it. It's actually okay. the European standard. Any uh, phone that started shipping about two years ago started transitioning. But the most important thing is versus mini-USB yeah. is micro-USB is rated for 10,000 or more cycles. You can take oh, a so table hang it in it and dangle it. It's not only stronger, but you don't have to worry about wearing it out. And okay. if you look, this is through hole. We did so much engineering on here. There's actually little stubby yeah. through holes on here so that you can't break it off when you pull out the I think okay, you know like every little detail about like, you clearly you obsessed about We obsess this. about details. Okay, great. So I'm gonna ask you because I actually haven't had because you guys have been sold out. Yeah, we pretty we, much non stop. They've been popular, yeah. They've been really popular. So I haven't, Thank I haven't you, even I had a chance and we have we have them now. So, um, when you write for the Arduino, mm -hmm. you're writing um, like Arduino E, which is C, C++. Yeah, C with really nice processing libraries that simplify C way Yeah, down. it's basically C++ and Mac. But you can still do C, so you got the registers yeah. and all the power features of the microcontroller. And then when you program it, it's basically bare metal. You're, you're mm -hmm. actually writing bare metal onto the chip, whereas this, it's almost, it, well, it compiles to machine code. With this, with .NET, which is a programming language, you're not programming directly with .NET, right? There's a machine on here that interprets. When you use the wiring libraries on the Arduino, there's a, there's a little bit of room between you and the microcontroller, yeah. but it's not it's not a lot. With .NET or any interpreted language or, or virtual machine, there's a lot more between you and yeah. it. But what happens is when you write code, it can run on any microcontroller which runs micro frameworks. So it's very high end. It, it is very high level. It's like Java. Is what so you can is. open like a TCP IP socket and it's like, it's, yeah. it's like oh, the whole system is built. Yeah, you say, I want a socket connection to this web server and it just starts streaming data to you. But yeah. you can take that same stream concept and apply it to a file or a serial port and it all works the same. Much cleaner. So, it's um, very, very so easy. So let's to say, so with .NET, so I, I learned Java, mm -hmm. so it's very similar. It's like a Java virtual machine. Mm -hmm. Same sort of thing. And also, of course, you can always program the bare chip itself. Yeah. In fact, right here, you'll notice in the corner, we expose the erase pad right on the chip. And we, we fully yes. support hacking on Netduinos. We have a community of people putting free RTOS on this thing and writing native code and completely clearing .NET off. But at the same time, most people use .NET because it's really powerful. Yeah. Now, you can go and you can write native code on here. Just like with Arduino, you have register access. If yeah. you want to write C code, you can download the firmware, compile all the tweaks in the world you want to write into the source, and you have all that native access as well mixed with .NET, so you get the best of both worlds. 
You can yeah. do your command and control in the high level program thing, which is really easy, but then you do that crazy bit banging thing you want to do with that display down you in do C. You do it really fast and you just don't want yeah. to have it. So this is. 48 megahertz. Yeah, so this is an ARM core? This is an ARM 7. Okay, so an ARM 7 core. And then you downloaded the specifications for the .NET bytecode, and then you wrote the virtual machine for this, or did you so, port one? Or no, Microsoft. Port? Microsoft spent millions and millions of dollars the porting Microsoft. .NET to microcontrollers. They spent millions of dollars on coffee. Yeah, well, at, they, <laughs> they spent. They, my, Microframe are seven years old. Um, wow. Two years ago, they open sourced it under an industry standard OSI approved open source license oh, nice. called Apache 2.0. Yeah. And that's because they want to see adoption on microcontrollers. You know, it's it's hard to sell a, a license. For you know, however many cents or dollars onto a you know microcontroller, it just isn't the same world. Because you want to embed it into everything, and it gets very complicated, and you, it's sub. And, and it would just be too expensive, and then yeah. it's closed source, and you can't see what's going on inside. You're too yeah. far away. So with this, you get all the source. You can dig down as deep as you want. In fact, um, and I'm sure you want to talk about it as well. The Mono team at yeah. Novell, which creates the open source C Sharp IDE and compiler and all this stuff, so you have true open source there too. They've actually gone and integrated support for compiling for this as well. Because they had access to all of that, because it was open source and microframework, they were able to make it work on Linux and Mac under a different open source scheme as well. So Mono is a separate, it it's, it's uses the same language, but it's a different microframework? Or is it the same bytecode? So or what's the... the code that runs on here is identical, right? The, oh, the open source okay. .NET that's running on here takes the bytecode, the, the yeah. I, IL language, intermediate language yeah. assembly is what it's called. Um, and runs it on here. What Mono does on the Mac and Linux is it lets you write your C Sharp code yeah. and compile it into .NET oh, bytecode. Okay. And then you can use Microsoft's open source tools to shrink that down so it'll fit on here and you can deploy it either onto an SD card. You could write on the on the Plus, which we'll talk about in a minute with networking. You can actually send the data over a network, load it dynamically and reboot it on the fly and you can I load a, all that I have code. I a question, but why can't, if it already has a framework on it, the, the virtual machine mm -hmm. on here, I'm gonna call it virtual machine because I'm gonna No, that's great. It's all, it's all I remember learning. Why can't you take the mono code and just transmit it? Is there is there like a talking interface that you can't get to with mono? So mono compiles C sharp code to .NET bytecode. Yeah. Right? It, it already does. It didn't do. I wouldn't do microframework code because microframework uses a different IL. It uses oh, a oh, different oh, oh. set of .NET core and libraries. and microframework are different things. So .NET is is the generic name for all of the different virtual machines, intermediate language um, yeah. virtual machines that Microsoft makes. You have .NET for the desktop, you have .NET Compact Framework for embedded devices that have displays and things, yeah. uh, bidding machines, slot machines, things like this. You have the Silverlight, which is a version of .NET for Windows phones. You have .NET okay. Microframework running on here. There's a bunch of different .NETs. They all look the same, and they all compile to about the same thing. But in order to fit it on here, instead of having a hundred dollar runtime on yeah, your like PC a or a hundred megabyte runtime on your computer, yeah. you have a three hundred kilobyte runtime on yeah. here. It's yeah, yeah, tiny, yeah. so yeah, you have to be able to like, compile against it. They don't it. have a keyboard interface or mouse. Actually, they do. Oh, geez. Yeah. If, if you want, well, no, not not that this talks to a keyboard, but you can make this into a keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a mouse. So or with, a joystick. So with mono, uh, you can you write your code. You could use some could publish code from the Arduino. You know, they take the code, they compile it for mono. Mm -hmm. And then you have to first load the, the mono virtual machine on here? No, no. This you, runs, the same you don't have to change anything on the Netduino. You, you have use to load the it through existing open card. source intermediate language interpreter that's on here. Yeah. You can load through an SD card. You can go however you want. Um, if you want to load it over serial, you could actually do it over pins one and two. You could load it over networking on the plus or through a shill. Yeah. Um, what we recommend right now, it just barely went into beta, the Mac like, and yeah, Linux it's like support. Yeah, two weeks ago. It's, it's very, very early. They just got the first compiler into beta. Um, we got all the tools working under Wine, which is an open source kind of yeah. Windows virtual thing for, yeah. for Mac and Linux. I remember that from the 90s. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got the uh, metadata processor, which shrinks down your .NET code to fit on here. It strips out a lot of the extraneous stuff, yeah. so it doesn't say this program runs doesn't run in DOS mode and things like yeah. that are normally in the exact, so sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but all, all that all that's running on Linux. What we don't have on Linux yet is a really pretty IDE like the Visual Studio that you get for free that runs on well, Windows. Well, they spent all millions of dollars. On yeah, that. well, they did. But Mono has one called Mono Develop, and now the community is actually integrating support for Microframework into that. Mm. So the first six months of Netduino was getting for Linux. Mac was getting it so that you could compile code and use a fully open source tool chain. Mm -hmm. The next six months is getting a nice IDE to go behind it so you can write your code, have copy and paste, color coding. Um, when you hit dot, it'll show you all your different options for what you're working yeah, on. Yeah. And then deploying to the device directly from the IDE. Wow. Well, I mean, it's a good start. And that's all community supported. That's good. So that's great. So you guys have three versions. You have yep. Netduino Classic. Yeah, we have the regular Netduino. Netduino Plus, which has Ethernet, because this chip supports Ethernet. It does. We're actually, chip. we're actually using 20 pins from this chip through the spy and magnetics to go to this low-profile Ethernet jack. 
Now this yeah, is like 100 this. megabit Ethernet. You're not going to get that kind of speed on the chip. Yeah. But you did get about one megabit per second, which is like seven to ten times faster than like a WizNet shell. This is really, yeah. really fast. Wizness Full DHCP, slow. real IP stack, and because we want to push open source farther and farther, yeah. we actually put an open source networking stack on this. So you're not yeah. talking to a proprietary chip. You're actually using a fully open source networking stack mm. on the chip. Cool. Um, and then you have the little mini... Yeah, the mini's cute. Yeah, so the mini is really cute. for you finish a product and you want to stick the chip into it. Um, you can use this in a breadboard, and it's actually basic stamp 2 compatible. So there's a UART yes. in the right place, and there's a RS-232 UART in the right place. You got everything you need to use it with those robot kits that you have from the basic staff base. Wow. Okay. Well, there's the door. Um, that's our time. So thank you for coming and visiting us here at Adafruit from all the way from Midtown, where you're <laughs> right. from. Uh, Secret Labs. Uh, this was Chris Walker showing off the Netduino. Where can you get more information about Netduino? Uh, Netduino.com, and you can okay. buy them on Adafruit.com. All right. Thank you.